Okay guys, first time ever self do it yourself tire rotation on a Chevy Bolt. And uh tools, I got impact wrench, torque wrench, 19 millimeter socket, relearn tool, have to remove the tires around. And a couple floor jacks. And I'll show you the uh lift points here where we're going. Let's see if I can get my camera here to get under the car. Might be some weird angle here, but uh, so here's the, uh, the rear mud flap here, and it's just one of this bar here. And here's the jack lift points for the rear and the front. Right about here. positioning okay here's the bolt manual and what you need to know from here is the wheel nut torque is 100 foot pounds or 140 newton meters and the other thing you need to know is right here our tire inspection, tire should be rotated every 7,500 miles and we're doing this to try to keep even wear so that we can replace the tires for a set of all four at one time sometimes you can get better pricing if you buy a whole set I know some people try to uh, do some funny rotation schemes to budget their tire purchases so they're buying only two at a time um, some arguments against that would be that when you want to change tire brands or types um, you can't do it can't do all four at once anyway that's a different topic and um, here is the rotation pattern all we use and you need to do this type of pattern for optimum wear and the the only time you don't do this is if you were to have specific uh, different tires in the rear than in the front and of course then you would have to rotate the rear tires from left to right and the front tires from left to right. The other possible pattern would be that if you had a type of tire that was directional which means that they only should rotate in one direction and it will be indicated on the sidewall of the tire by a special arrow that the manufacturer puts on that outside of the tire to let you know it's directional. Um, there's no indicator to let you know that it's not directional. There's just an omission of that arrow. And uh, the way my bolt came was with tires that were non-directional. Therefore, I could uh, rotate the tires in this pattern across the vehicle. And the other thing I'd love to know about, if any of you guys could comment on this, is the um, this recommended procedure here, which is to install some grease in the wheel after while you're doing the, the wheel rotation. And I couldn't really find any specific information on, you know, exactly how to do that, um, whether it's the the what part of the spindle or the hub or where to be careful not to get the grease. I, I didn't really dig deep in YouTube to try to find out someone you know showing that procedure. Anyway if you have any comments I'd really appreciate that. I did not do that when I did the rotation. I'm in the in Texas so our winters aren't as harsh. There's really not much rust buildup, at least not in my first year of ownership. So I skipped this section um, but I would do it if I actually knew how uh, had somebody show me how to do that, that'd be great. So here's a quick rundown of the things you can buy, which are what I used in the video for my tools. Here's a floor jack. I used two of these. Um, I got them on sale. Right now they're 79 but I got them for 59 with a coupon. And 
torque wrench. Um, some torque wrenches don't go up to 100, so make sure to get the ones that can maybe go up to, this one goes to 150. I got it on sale for about 11 bucks. And there's a socket set again. I got a coupon on that, a little cheaper. Coupon on this socket set as well, a little cheaper than that. And the impact wrench I used was at this Direct Tools factory outlet, which is uh, here in Fort Worth. And I ran up there to pick it up, and I found out they had um, they had a sale on it. Any Ryobi tool with the the battery scenario was 20% off. Plus, they also had refurbished um, tools in brown boxes with a lesser warranty of one year instead of the three years. And I got that wrench for 72. And the last tool I bought was this um, relearn tool, which you need after you rotate the tires around to reorient the computer to knowing which tire is positioned where so it correctly displays the tire pressure on the console. And we'll, uh, we'll start at the rear. And uh, let's get this positioned here. I want you to pay particular close attention to this exact positioning because this is the most critical of the four points. And if you take a quick note, I'm about to show it to you. There's a black pan with a silver bolt coming out of it. And it's right there. See that? You do not want to rest your pad on that pan. It's a tight fit. And for some reason, this lifting point is much is a much tighter fit than all the other three lifting points. So just be aware of that as you apply pressure. Make sure you really position that carefully on the lifting point, not touching any other components of the vehicle. Positioned, and I'll uh, block some wheels here. Grab these, block the wheels. For now, okay. Let's loosen these bolts first. Instead of editing this video down to five or ten minutes, I thought I'd leave it full length so that I could add plenty of voiceover comments in it, so stay tuned. Technically speaking, you really shouldn't use a torque wrench to undo bolts, but um, you know, usually a breaker bar would be used for something that's really old and rusty or hard to get off, but this is a pretty much a still a brand new vehicle, and I just went ahead and used the the torque wrench was maybe in maybe 10 more pounds than the what it was dialed in for so I didn't feel like I was stressing it at all okay. now what I'm doing here is I'm lifting the vehicle mostly off that tire but I still want a little bit of the tread of the wheel to contact the cement so that it doesn't turn while I'm undoing the bolts with the, the uh, impact wrench. Now this is the first time I'm using these tools. I've really never experienced a torque wrench, uh, or I should say a, a impact wrench, and I've never used floor jacks before, so I'm not really getting after it. I'm just kind of feeling it out for the first time. Okay, let's just go more. So the total time it took me to do this was about 20 minutes, and so learning the tools for okay. the first time slowed me down a little bit and also just managing the camera on my on my head and getting underneath there so you guys could see it kind of slowed me up a little bit. So imagine doing this rotation the second time without a camera would take me about maybe 15 minutes. 
So here comes my first mistake where I'm bringing the rear tire to go to the front. And because I did not memorize the rotation pattern correctly, I reversed the front and rear of the car. And so I should be bringing the front tire to the rear. And this is fine as long as I'm consistent for the next four rotations and then I can get back to the correct pattern. So the front lift points are much easier to position the jack stands underneath. Notice the lift points, they do have holes in the center of them and I have seen some guys comment that they've made a custom pad with the little half dome built into them to actually make that connection real tight. Okay, let's see how these bolts are tight. This is the first time I'm doing it, so I uh, wanted to get an idea of how tight these were manually before hitting them with the impact wrench. So I've spent hours and hours before being able to do this, researching the tools I needed, getting questions answered about the rotation pattern and why other people were doing it different ways. And hopefully I've, I'm going to encourage you to just see how easy is this it process is and you can just step right up and do it. And hopefully my video, my 30 minute video will just allow you to save a lot of time and having to re find out the answers to the questions I had and so um, and I'm and if you guys see anything I'm doing that could be done in a better way man let me know I'd like to optimize my my time as much as you would this is the point in the manual that they recommend putting grease on the hub there and sure would like to know from you guys any comments on exactly how to do that. I just just didn't know or find any you know, other guys on YouTube showing or explaining that. And I didn't want to put grease that might have caused a problem. So I figured, well, I'm in Texas in the south, and it's not like some of these northern cars where rust can build up and it becomes an issue. So I just didn't put any grease and hopefully one of you guys can comment about how to do that or refer to some other video. That would be really helpful and I'll do that on future rotations. So as I said before, this impact wrench is still new to me and I'm not yet familiar with how much hammering I should allow it to do to get me close to my 100 foot-pounds. And uh, you'll see here as I use the torque wrench, I'm still about a quarter turn away from getting to that 100 pounds. And uh, I'll just have to learn that over time. I actually have the torque wrench dialed into 90 pounds and uh, what I'll do is I will drive the car a couple times back and forth to work and then I'll re-check re it at 100 pounds. I really needed to use blocks around the wheel but um, I went ahead and of course the car is in park and then I also set the parking brake which I believe the parking brake only uh, s sets the back wheels. Ok 
Okay, so I think by the last 30 years I've been rotating my tires at the discount tire chain. Great store and always get their road hazard coverage on my tires even when I buy a new car. A few weeks ago I had an aggravating experience. I went to discount tire to do the rotation. It's free. And they told me it'd be an hour and 15 minute wait time. So I said, okay, I, I'll keep my keys so I can sit in my car, listen to music, make some phone calls. And I decided, well, let me, let me run and grab a bite to eat. So I, I ran up the street for a bite and back in 30 minutes. I continued sitting in the parking lot for two hours and finally I walked in to see, hey, what's going on? And they told me they had walked out after 20 minutes, saw I was gone and canceled me. I then asked, well, could you sequence me back in since I've been camping out here? And they said, no. I'd have to go to the back of the line and wait another hour and a half. So my total experience for that little project would have been about four hours. And I just said, well, this, I just had to leave because I burned all my free time doing that little ordeal. And I had other appointments to get to that day. <clears throat> now, five days later, I went into a different part of town, had another discount tire, and tr tried again. But I declined again because it was a one and a half hour wait time. I know that other incident, I know that was my fault, but operating on their way overstated estimate, I said, uh, can you not punish me as if I had just returned after a two and a half hour hiatus? As if I'm wanting to force myself to the front of the line? Anyway, that was a little bit disappointing and it sure would be nice if they implemented a Walt Disney World type of fast pass to get you to the front of the line and you don't have to be at their premise. I know that health clinics and the DMV have been doing that for years now. Anyway, all that to say that story just kind of got me motivated to get my own gear on my own tools so that I could just do this in my own garage by myself in 20, 30 minutes, get it done and not have to do doink around with appointments with the dealership. I, I know that you can, the bolt comes with like two years of tire rotation and 24,000 miles, but again, you got to Carve out the time, drive there, drop it off, get the shuttle bus to your work. And, you know, sometimes they can do it while you're wait. I'm sure there's times when it really is quick. But, um, anyway, just a hassle and a waste of time if you can do it, do it yourself. Um, anyway, I didn't, you know, it's free to get tire rotations pretty much. But the money for these tools is pretty minimal for the time savings. And I also think, for me, this will be, I'll be more likely to do my tire rotations on the 7,000 mile interval, because what happens is I don't make the appointments, I don't carve out the time, time goes by, and like I'm doing these actually at 14,000 miles because I just didn't get around to it, and I kept putting it off. So I really wanted to get this where I could do it myself. <coughs> not waste my time and get it done in a timely manner. And of course the time I'm saving is not just the bolt I'm showing you here, but I have my wife's car as well, which I'll do that next. So I'm really saving quite a bit of time not having to chauffeur two cars over to the shop to get it done. As I said before, floor jacks were new to me, and I had to do a little bit of figuring out to know what I could get for this Chevy Bolt, and I found these racing style aluminum, and I had to figure out that, well, the reason aluminum is a selling point is because they're lightweight. These are very lightweight jacks compared to some of the steel jacks, which are like crazy, like 70, 80 pounds. So, which is no big deal if you're just letting them sit in your garage all the time, but if you want to lift them up to a shelf or something, well then the lightweight jacks would be nice to have. 
And the second issue I wasn't sure about was the height. So the low profile I means they could get into really low cars. But the question then was can they lift the car up high enough if they start out too low? And um, I had to just do some rough guesses and say, well, I'll just get the jack, see if it can lift it up high enough to get the tire off the, off the ground. And they were more than adequate. So I was very pleasant with this, these uh, two jacks that I got from uh, Harbor Freight. At first I thought this camera angle was um, completely going to miss the uh, the jack doing its thing, but it turned out to be one of the better shots of showing the positioning and the lifting of the jack in the proper lift point. And you can see the, the two holes there that could be used if you were only using one jack and jack stands to accomplish your mission. So my overall goal in my tool selection was to save time. So that's why I bought two floor jacks, because if I only bought one floor jack to try to save money and bought uh, maybe a, two jack stands to go with the one floor jack, yeah, I would have saved maybe 50, 60 bucks, but um, it takes longer to manipulate all those stands and the floor jack around to your current lift point so a little more struggle to get things positioned more accurately so again i was trying to save time and the two floor jacks allow you to save a lot of time the impact wrench do you need an impact wrench no you can use hand tools but i just wanted to spin those lug nuts off real quick and um I already had the battery, you know, I already had the Ryobi batteries for other hand tools, and so the cost of that impact wrench was minimal. Uh, I did not determine if, you know, that's a half inch impact wrench, and I did not spend the time to determine if maybe a three eighths or quarter inch impact wrench would have done the job just as well. So I went ahead and bought the slightly more expensive impact wrench. Again, my goal is to save time, and I think, you know, with, with the low-cost, fairly low-cost tool acquisition, I think I accomplished the goal pretty easily. Now notice how when you mount the wheel to the hub that the bottom half of the wheel wants to kick out, so it's better if you put the lower lug nuts on first to cinch that up. Now in case you're not familiar with floor jacks, you need to know that turning the handle to the left, rotating it to the left, reduces the pressure and lowers it. And rotating the handle to the right closes the valve so that you can pump it back up. These floor jacks are low-cost floor jacks, and they're missing certain features of the more expensive ones. Some things I saw that were on the more expensive ones, besides being able to lift more tonnage, are that the arm will have a greater throw on it, so you can lift things up a little bit higher. And some of them will have like uh, locking pins, so that you can kind of use them as a safety in place of jack stands, um, 
not exactly as secure as jack stands, but the locking pins will be, get you pretty close to the same functionality. Okay, I'm sure 95% of you guys out there already know this, but I thought I'd mention it anyway for those of you who may not know it. Is that when you're tightening lug nuts, you need to, as much as possible, do it in a crisscross pattern or a star pattern. So, as you see, it, be it becomes more critical as you do the really uh, higher pounds of tightening. So as you see right here, I'm, I'm maintaining that crisscross pattern with the torque wrench. I didn't do so much with the impact wrench because I wasn't really getting after it. But when you really start putting the pressure on them, you should be doing a crisscross pattern just to help guarantee that the wheel sets in the exact position properly. Uh, if you don't do that, it could get a little bit off, off center and then you'd have uh, vibration problems potentially could uh, you know, shear off the bolts and lose a wheel on the highway or something. Okay, next is the, uh, the relearn tool. No idea how to use this. So I'm just gonna wing it the first time, and if I get in trouble, I'll go to the manuals. Okay, I believe the car has to be powered on. I'm not sure about that. Let's see. Probably has to be on. Okay, let's turn, I think as you push this button, I oh, rotate it, this button, nope. Note that of all the computer technology going on in the bolt, there is no provision for tracking your tire rotation mileage. Okay, I think we sucked on the steering wheel maybe. It's on the tires and you hold it down. Okay, relearn. Yeah, so you hold, find the tire menu, hold the checkbox for five seconds and it'll ask you. Okay, tire learning. Here's the part I don't. So now this uh, tells you which tire it's doing. I'm assuming I just hold this button here. Okay. Next one lights up right here and there. Of course, got a low battery in there. Hopefully, I won't have to swap out the battery. If you're not familiar, the sensors are located just beneath the valve stem. That's why I'm locating the tool right near the valve stem. Okay. Now we got the rear light there. And the final light here for the final tire. Okay. Oh, two honks and we're good. That should do it.